How's everybody doing? It's great to be here tonight. I am Topher Shaw. It's going to be a little different for me. If you're going to see. I was bullied as a kid. I was bullied. Surprise! <laughs> Bet you didn't expect that. I was bullied. I get up each day. They would spit in my face. They'd throw my stuff around. They call me mean, ugly names. Like you ugly, no shoulders, Jimmy Neutron looking boy. I hated being homeschooled. <laughs> Reading between the lines is very dangerous, especially when you're waiting for a train. My grandmother got her scarf caught in one of those Ferris wheels. She was able to regain consciousness. After all, what goes around? <laughs> Thank you. My grandpa, he gets so annoyed that he can't do the things that he used to be able to do. Like, Grandpa, you can't bomb the Japanese anymore. <laughs> I think the reason why no one's ever become a reverse psychologist is because no one ever told them they can't be. <laughs> Thank you. I was driving down my neighborhood. There is actually a high school right down the street. And I stopped at the school zone and I saw a bisexual crossing guard. You know how I know? She was letting kids go both ways. <laughs> I was watching the History Channel yesterday, which is the best time to watch the History Channel. <laughs> Had weird parents growing up. Our kids got money from the Tooth Fairy. My parents were religious. They believed a tooth for a tooth. Like it was a sacrifice. I put my tooth underneath my pillow. Next morning, a different tooth. <laughs> what is this? Is this the dog's tooth? Dogs in the corn just eating jello. Good boy. I know I'm too immature to have any kids in my life. I know this because I went to one of my best friend's house for a birthday party for his little girl. And it got to the party and I snapped on the little girl. I snapped on her hard because she spilled tea all over my pants. And I was just reacting. She ran run around carelessly, had the glass in her hand, and dropped it on my pants. I was like, oh my God, you messed up my pants, Melissa. And she cried and she ran upstairs. And I felt so bad, immediately felt so bad about the whole situation. And my friend grabs me by the arm, takes me outside. He goes, you're a grown adult. That was a four-year-old little girl. It was imaginary tea. <laughs> this is my impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger as a fisherman. <laughs> that is not a tuna! <laughs> I was raised by a single parent. I was raised by my dad. My mother left before I was born. Every woman I've ever met or ever dated loves ponies, which sucks for me because I love to glue stuff. <laughs> and I think if I meet the right lady and settle down, I'll probably buy her a horse. And she'll be like, that is a beautiful, beautiful pony. What is his name? His name's Sticky. <laughs> his name is Sticky. And this is my impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> as a zookeeper. That's not a poodle! <laughs> There's a lot of old sayings that really annoy me. It's like the very old saying, feed a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That's a terrible saying, because I've never seen a homeless person fishing. 
These people need a job, not a hobby. I don't understand the millennial slang, like millennials, the slang they use. Like I went home and my roommate, he's depressed. And I get to him and I go, hey, why are you so depressed? He's like, this woman, she ghosted me. I go, what is this ghosting? He goes, that's when they stop texting you, they don't answer your phone calls, they just vanish out of your life like they never existed in the first place. I go, for one, that term makes no sense whatsoever because ghosts don't ignore you. Ghosts jump out, they make noise, they're trying to interact with you. I've never been to a haunting and been like, this place is haunted. But that ghost keeps blowing me off. <laughs> Got my Ouija board out, no replies whatsoever. <laughs> ghosts don't ignore you. You know what that term should be called? Bigfooting. <laughs> Went out with Melissa last week, freaking Bigfooting me. <laughs> Saw her at a party, she jumped out a window, ran into the forest, freaking Bigfooting me. I got one blurry picture of her on my phone, nobody even believes she exists. Freaking Bigfooting me. <laughs> I was watching this TV show about people who have strange and interesting phobias. And they talked to this one guy, he had agoraphobia. You guys know what agoraphobia is? He was terrified to leave his house. He hadn't taken a step out of his house in over four years. I was like, oh my God, that's a long time. But then he kind of ticked me off because they, they, they interviewed him. He's like, man, ain't nothing worse than having the agoraphobia. I was like, what? I was like, you could have cancer. You could be paralyzed. You could have agoraphobia and be homeless. <laughs> Checkmate! I'll start feeling bad for this guy when it takes him three years, four years to get out of a dumpster. Is that mean? I know it's Germantown. A lot of homeless people, they deal with mental health, being depressed, schizophrenia, multiple personalities. Can't be easy. People give them a hard time walking by like, get a job, stop being a bum. Go get a job. Maybe he has one, but Calvin won't tell him where it's at. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason why you see him out there on the, on the sidewalk just talking to himself like, where do we work at again? I ain't telling you shh. <laughs> I ain't telling you crap. We got any poor people that grew up here? What a question to ask. I grew up poor. I remember the kids in my neighborhood would show off all their nice toys. They had really nice toys and I hated it. They had toys like the CNC toy. You guys remember that toy? Pull the string, cowgirls moo! My mom could not afford that toy. She just gave me a hammer, send me to the pet store. Don't ow me. <laughs> Cat goes, brow! Dog goes, whoa! Parakeet goes, is anybody gonna take this hammer away from this white boy? <laughs> they say get over being poor like it's easy. It's never easy. I don't know if this ever happened to you guys, but me as a child, I got my telephone turned off. So my mom put the new phone in my name. I was eight years old with a damn phone. She rented up over $40. I was in the fourth grade with terrible credit. <laughs> I didn't know anything about bad credit. I'd be in the lunch line, they'd be like, Topher, let me borrow $4. I'm like, nah, man, my mom messed up my credit. <laughs> but can I have my big world in your garage so they don't repossess it? <laughs> then I got to college to try to get a phone. They said, no, nah, bro, you still owe us money. I said, man, I can't have no phone. I don't have no kids. Then one day, I saw a commercial. It said for 23 cents, I can adopt a kid and I'll put the new phone in his name. <laughs> in high school, I was trying to save up for a car. My very first job was working at the Malcolm Movie Theater, selling popcorn and ripping tickets. 2002, Blockbuster movie came out, Men in Black 2. And our boss thought it'd be really cool if we all just wore sunglasses in the spirit of the movie. So I'm up front ripping tickets. Guess who walks in? Not Will Smith. 
No Tommy Lee Jones. My high school crush, Holly Stanick. In high school, I was short, goofy, silly, sort of smart, kind of dumb, kind of didn't know what to do. Big nerd. Nothing like I am now. <laughs> so I'm up front ripping tickets, and Holly walks up, and she's like, hey, what movie theater is Men in Black 2 playing in? And I was so petrified to talk, to say anything. I was like, hey, I don't even uh, fear uh, you. Uh, and her best friend behind her goes, how do you even not know how to talk? And two, how do you not know what movie theater Men in Black 2 is playing in? You work here. And I swear to you, I swear on my life, Holly goes, leave him alone. He's blind. <laughs> you think I'm blind? We went to high school together. You think I'm blind? I saw you every day in the hallway. You think I'm blind? Every person who works here is wearing sunglasses. You think we're all blind? No offense, that'd be the worst possible movie fair to go to. People walk in like, excuse me, sir. Could you help me find my seat? No, none of us can. <laughs> Sir, do you by chance sell any Swedish fairs? I don't know. None of us know. <laughs> Sir, I'm a little bit agitated. I think I like to see your manager. So do we. We would all like to see the manager. I've been tough for Shaw. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Justin.